Hi everyone! Welcome to this special little episode of Not Quite a Shopcast, but still on our Wooly Thistle YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin, part of the Wooly Thistle team, and I'm just here to introduce a collection of videos that I hope you'll enjoy. Uh, this video is launching on March 29th, which is the first day of our Shawl Knit Along 2024. And we're going to be starting to knit shawls together over the next six weeks. Uh, feel free to join us even if you have not signed up yet or gotten your project all figured out. Um, there's still plenty of time to hop on. So go to our website, uh, look in the show notes under this video. Uh, we'll put a link to the, the page where you can find out more. And the rest of this um, video is a collection of sort of highlights and uh, favorites of Shopcast episodes from the past where the team has been talking about shawls. Some of our favorites, uh, some that you might have forgotten about. Uh, we thought you might like a little rewatch collected all in one handy place for you on this cast on day. So enjoy, bring your knitting along, and happy knitting! I did bring a small sample of my own shawls to, so that we could talk a little bit about shawl construction. Yep. Because um, there's different um, talk shapes. Talk to us. So I don't know if we want to look at the half to see yes, the basic I think that's construction. a good start. So um, this uh, is the Hansel half hap. Oh, it's lovely. It's so soft. Um, and this is the, the large size um, that I knit. And it, you can see that it has the square center or a triangular center right. and then all the outgoing. So um, you start by knitting this back and forth mm -hmm. and then you pick up stitches and you knit back and forth on this border. And then there's an applied edging mm -hmm. last, which you may choose not to do. You don't have to, but it certainly adds a beautiful lacy finish yes to the shawl and just remind us what you knitted this in um so i knit this in um armscope manor's black welsh mountain it's gorgeous uh, i think i used two skeins mm. um, it's so and soft then, and squishy yeah and then my stripes are a mix of the the three of the colors the peach the greeny yellow and the white are all woolly mammoth yep um and the teal is a blacker yes um, this is another hap, just because we are hap-centric here, I think. This here is the Balvraid hap by, ooh, we'll put her name there. <laughs> she designed it for blacker, mm -hmm. but I actually used Berlin yarn for this, the Hebridean. So this is all one color. And you can see same construction where I knit back and forth on the center and then you pick up stitches and and when you them. when you started did you start here at the bottom i'm pretty sure you do you go yes but i i wouldn't swear to that if somebody um but yes I'm that's pretty a pretty sure. standard half it construction is. i think so and i would have remembered casting all that on so yeah. yeah you start at the bottom and you increase very easily and then you knit back and forth the lacy part and then you apply the edging mm -hmm. and this is one of my favorites I really enjoyed knitting this mm -hmm. I would I would knit this again actually so yeah. that's the Balvraid hap which is a good one um, um <clears throat> oh look at this I know so this is a non-traditional shape um this is the Ito shawl by Melody Hoffman which we still sell kits for even mm -hmm. now several years since yeah. it came out people love it yeah because I, I remember we this was probably one of our first yarn sets yeah that we ever put together I think in the so shop. and it's Plotilope yeah, it's Pluto Lopi. It is absolutely wonderful. Look how um, fluffy. It's almost a schlanket. Like, especially, I'm not very tall. Um, <laughs> but you you use multiple colors, and she has you um, at sort of, you know, gradient them together and go from dark over to light. And the lace is just so pretty. It is. And it's very woolly smelling. It oh, my gosh. It sort of ends up triangular, but you're really, you start from this end with a few stitches, and you go to the big end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's very cozy. It's and it's it's does not it bother has, me. It has softened up over time. At first it was it was I mean it's it's plotilope, so it was a little prickly, but I have I wrap up in it frequently. Yeah. There's again, that's something about the yarns we sell here at the Woolly Thistle is they get better and better with age. So this has they softened really up. This feels so fluffy, so comforting. Mm -hmm. I love how this dark 
I'm really into brown right now too. This feels very. Yeah. And the nice thing about Pluto Lopi is when you're working that gradient, um, like she really, she shows you in the pattern where to intersplice the lighter colors. Right. And it's great because you just break it, rub it together and keep going. Yeah. It's the fastest it's, splicing. Exactly. Exactly. It's just wonderful. Do we have any other shells to show? I do. So I brought a couple more. Um, this one, we no longer carry this yarn, but I love this shawl. Um, we had this in as a special. This was from Black, uh, Black Elephant. Black Elephant? Was it Black Elephant? Black Elephant? I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. Black Elephant. Um, she's an indie dyer out of the UK. Yeah. Um, and this is the Waiting for Rain shawl. Um, it's hard to see um, the pattern on the because of the like the variation the variegate, in yeah. there. But what I like about this is it's a crescent shape, as you can see, a very long wingspan. Yeah. Um, and, that, and if you're lens. new to lace, um, it's great because it has these little wedges of lace. Um, mm -hmm. And so it gives you a little sampling and then you're back to garter. Yeah. Um, and so same thing here. Then you, it's Beautiful. got like three lacy sections. Um, Very nice. Yeah, her yarn is I don't is tend lovely. to re-knit patterns, but I have knit this one twice. Have you? So for me, that's yeah. high praise. Um, I knit one for my sister, and then I was like, I want one. Yeah. Um, and I knit one for myself. Cool. And I absolutely love it. I would knit it again. Yeah. Yeah. So fun to see the fun. Um, and then I forget the name of this one. This one's knit in hand spun. It's very soft. Um, what I like about this one and I want to show you is because it's a similar triangular shape, but it's more of a classic triangular shape. You start at the top, you've got that center spine. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. We'll put the name there, but you've got that center spine and, um, very even increases, increases along the spine. Um, until it with, and with just a little eyelet for, mm -hmm. for the, you know, and so very simple knitting, but really yeah. eminently wearable, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Any more? Um, I have one more, which is, um, <laughs> speaking of non-traditional, um, it is the dotted rays shawl from Stephen West. This was super fun. Um, you start here, he has an eye cord edge, so he teaches you how to do that. And you start here at this little tiny center and it just grows out into these big gorgeous with little dots. What did you knit this in? This is also hand spun. Wow. Um, so it's spun singles. Um, it was Snurb yarn um, back when she was still dying. Wow. Um, Beautiful. And yeah, so it was just really fun. So, and they all wear a little bit differently, yeah. like how you put them on. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to mention this might have had a garter stick, a garter tab. A garter tab, yeah. So, um, if you're new to shawl knitting, which if you are, please join in. You'll have lots of support from all the other knitters. Um, but a garter tab often will start a shawl, and that's so that you basically typically will knit two stitches or three stitches three or six rows, something like mm -hmm. that. And then you pick up the, the stitches down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. And what that does is it lets you start in the middle mm -hmm. of the long, because now you've got all these stitches going here and it eventually sort of flattens out. Yep. And so it saves you having to cast on a bajillion stitches on the long end. Yep. Um, so that's what that is. Um, I remember being, why am I doing that? That's weird, you yeah. know, but that's why it, it just helps you. Um, and then you can just increase out from the middle, which is a really nice thing. Anything, any, any progress you've made is, is it's good progress. Yeah. Um, so don't feel bad nope. if you don't finish. Right. But, but I finished. <laughs> <laughs> she said, this is um, so magnificent. I really love it. It's beautiful. I really enjoyed knitting this. Ugh. Um, it looks so squishy. I, I never would have dreamed that what I, I would have enjoyed knitting from the outside with all those stitches. Well, in, very motivational quite... to be getting shorter and shorter, I, yeah. would, I would guess. So tell us what you knitted this in again. Um, so I used Jameson and Smith 2-ply. I used a cone of 202 um, and then um, about four, three other colors. Mm -hmm. um, I purchased a Hansel Hap kit. I've got lots of yarn left, but I don't mind having Janice. <sighs> yes. Um, so Beautiful. You know, it's it's really nice. It's very lightweight and cozy. It stays yeah. on my shoulders really well. Looks squishy. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. it's lovely. It does stay on your shoulders, so it's a good shape. It does. For it's a good shape. Wearing. Um, I think you'll get a lot of wear out of this actually. Yeah. yeah. I was wearing it a bunch on Friday. It's a bit warmer today. Yeah. So no yeah. Need the, for warm, the warm weather's well, but it's still nice and cool in the the morning. So I have a couple of my um, haps or shawls that I've knitted over the years and then some recommendations for uh, yarns that will give you a drapey shawl. Uh, some things to keep in mind when you're looking for drape. So 
I'll pull a couple of examples up first and then we'll talk about yarn choices. Uh, so this I think might have been one of the first shawls I knit. This is called the Linus shawl. It's sort of asymmetrical triangle. The point comes down at kind of a asymmetrical spot and it's very um, shallow. It's got a large wingspan, but it doesn't go very deep. So you can just kind of wear it like a scarf. Um, fun thing about this is it's just garter. So it's very simple and you just start on the end here with like one or two stitches and you increase on one side, like one stitch and you increase on the other side, two stitches or it's, um, increasing at different rates on the sides, which creates, um, this really cool shape. It was a self-striping yarn. I think it's a cascade something from years ago. So by the end, you've cast on about this many stitches, uh, and that's how many you bind off. But it's very simple and kind of a fun shape, pretty wearable as sort of a scarf. Uh, next, I've got something sort of similar to that. It's um, the Summa or Summa Shawl, S-U-M-M-A, by Meiju KP. And this uh, is another one where you start kind of on one end it ends up doing some short rows. There's a little bit of eyelet kind of stuff. It's 200 gram skeins. I used every bit of both of them almost. Um, these are, I think, plucky knitter, something of a um, souvenir yarn from a few years ago. Um, it's kind of another shallow but wide um, shawl that's easy to kind of wrap around like a scarf. This here is another fun example of how short rows can create a really pretty shawl. This is the Aggregate Shawl by Jimmy Knits. And this used um, kind of again some superwash speckled souvenir yarn. I used to pick up uh, like a skein or something of a uh, special yarn that caught my eye when we'd be traveling. I don't tend to do that so much anymore now that I work for the Woolly Thistle and I'm, um, yeah, pretty. Um, well stocked in in our yarns but anyway this one starts it's a triangle shape starts here and then you kind of do these some um, short rows back and forth here and there to create these sort of wedges which was fun then let's see this one is what i would call maybe a or i think stephen west calls a schlanket <laughs> it is the courage shawl by shannon cook and it is really big <laughs> <laughs> it's a triangle and this is one that lives on the back of my couch in my living room and is very um, big like a shawl blanket <laughs> it's mostly hand spun and is mosaic knitting so has um, some kind of fun motifs two solid colors and a kind of variegated color in there and I've knit two of these. It's a really fun one, this one and one for a friend. It probably needs some care. It does get a lot of use at my house. Love the size of this uh, for like throwing on over the shoulders on a cold evening. Um, and then similar to that, I have the Hansel Hap that I knit last year for our Hap Knit Along. This is by Goodwin Johnston and is knit in Jameson and Smith to ply jumper weight for the colors and Jameson and Smith Shetland Supreme for the, the main color. Um, this is the half size, so it's just a triangle. And again, is the kind that really goes over your shoulders nicely. Um, this one lives on the back of my desk chair. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm glad I ended up taking a lot longer to do the lace edge. I think that looks pretty. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this one in a minute. So I'll keep that handy because I want to talk about yarns for shawls and especially when you're looking to get that drape, um, kind of easy to wrap around, a uh, little bit flowy fabric um, that, that just creates like a nice, a nice feel to it. Um, so let's kind of go into what makes a yarn drapey and what are some from the woolly thistle that might be some that you want to consider for your project. So drape has to do with 
the relationship between the stitches, how they kind of sit next to each other, and how the fibers of the yarn itself kind of rub next to each other and um, kind of interact. So in general, you'll find that drapier yarns are going to be smooth and um, like denser and less fluffy and fuzzy fibers to begin with. And then the preparation of the yarn is going to be the type of prep that smooths the yarn out. So, and, and I'm just talking in general because a lot of yarns can really vary depending on all, all of these different factors. So um, when you're looking at fibers, I'd say the drapiest fibers you can um, kind of keep in mind tend to be the cellulose fibers like cotton and hemp or linen and also non-wool fibers like um, alpaca and silk and um, mohair, camel, some of those fibers that don't have as much memory in them and are kind of just like a smoother texture to the individual fibers themselves. Uh, wool uh, can vary because there are so many breeds. The finer, crimpier, kind of like really zigzaggy yarns, those ones are gonna be the fluffy and fuzzy, more elastic, less drapey. Long wools that are more like curly, maybe a little bit thicker fibers, coarser fibers, those will tend to uh, lend more drape to a yarn. Then when you're preparing the yarn or when the mill has prepared the yarn, woolen prep, which is kind of fibers jumbled every which way, left with lots of their own kind of bounce and air, those will be elastic, which is sort of like the opposite of drapey. Um, and then the fibers that have been combed really smoothly all in a line and then spun that way to kind of maintain the smoothness and the um, organization, uh, that, that's worsted style spinning, um, those will tend to have more drape. When I think of an example of a woolly yarn, um, one that's going to create kind of the opposite of drape, I think of our frangipani yarn. It's maybe not one that you're as familiar with. It comes on a big cone and it's mainly used for Guernsey or Gansey style cabled fisherman's sweaters. It's meant to be tough. It's tightly spun, lots of plies, and it um, is basically waterproof, knit up to a dense fabric. That is going to be about the opposite of drape. <laughs> It's gonna hold its structure and uh, be pretty dense. On the opposite end of things, when I think of a drapey yarn, I brought from my stash what is my drapiest yarn. You can tell just from holding it that this yarn is going to drape. This is some hand spun. It is 100% Surrey alpaca. There's two kinds of alpacas, the fuzzy ones and then the ones that look like they're always wet. They're just like, the fiber just hangs down uh, in almost like these dreads. This is that Surrey alpaca. Um, and I spun this pretty loosely and as a two ply. Looser spinning and less plies are also um, kind of good indicators of drape. The more plies you have and the tighter th something is plied, the more the yarn is going to um, kind of be elastic and kind of, um, yeah, hold its structure um, it's bounce and, um, yeah, not be as drapey. So can't think of anything that's <laughs> drapier than this. <laughs> you can, you know, like sometimes hold a skein out sideways and it'll kind of hold its shape. But this one, uh, yeah, already has a lot of drape just in the skein. So, um, also talking about drape, um, beyond just the yarn choice is what, type of fabric you're knitting this into. Uh, in general, looser gauge is going to give you more drape. Something knit at a tighter gauge is going to kind of uh, make that fabric denser and hold its shape better. So um, if you stick with close to what the recommended yarn gauge is, you're gonna get something right in the middle. It's not going to be too drapey, it's not going to be too stiff. And that's kind of how they come up with these numbers, I believe, is just kind of what the yarn does um, best, I guess, to make the, um, 
the most like cohesive fabric. Um, so, and, and then it depends on what type of knitting project you're doing. If it's stockinette stitch or garter stitch, it'll have a bed of drape. If it's lace, it'll have a lot of drape. If it's color work or pretty tight cables um, or some like really intense textures, those are going to um, just involve more yarn, a few layers. It's not going to kind of stretch and drape as much. So in thinking of a good example, this Hansel hat I'm still holding here is an example of not what we would consider a drapey yarn. Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight is sort of a crimpy wool, Shetland wool. And it's wool and spun, so it's kind of springy and meant to be elastic, but it's loosely spun and plied, two ply, so that's more on the drapey side. And then this, I think, is knit on size eight needles, which is much bigger of a needle than you would usually use um, with fingering weight yarn. So it creates a nice kind of um, stretchy but drapey fabric. It's um, just really lovely because a lot of times we're not going for the most drapey thing you can think of. If I knit this into like a really loose lace thing, it might be a, this fabric that I couldn't even really do anything with. But um, yeah, what, what I really love about most of the yarns that we carry at the Woolly Thistle is that they're, they're not on one extreme end or the other. They are engineered, it seems, to do like the best of both. They're elastic, so it's nice feeling on our hands and sort of bouncy and maintains a lot of the wool characteristics that we love. But also they can have nice drape or sheen or shine. Uh, one of the companies I can think of that seems to have done this really well is John Arbin. And they also mill Marie Wallen's British breeds. Um, those, they've intentionally chosen such a combination of sheep breeds uh, to give you kind of the best of both worlds. Anyway, there are so many things to consider, but I hope at least the, the first few things I said there about what in general makes a drapey yarn kind of gives you a starting off point. The Bouquet Shawl by Linnea Ornstein. She is a Swedish designer with lots of different versions of this type of design. Um, her Area Shawl by um, that Kelsey knit a while ago and shared on the Shopcast here. Um, is a popular one. This one is a little bit different shape. So it's a full triangle and has uh, this sort of bouquet of, um, it, it's inspired by tulips. So those kind of radiate out from the side. You start knitting on the end here with a couple stitches and then work your way increasing on one side up here until you get to doing a whole bunch of short row tulips and I use my hand spun for this so it's a marled um, color changing yarn and I think it turned out really fun I love the feel of the fabric the main yarn is Olcentrum two ply sport I keep um, buying this yarn because I had some leftover from my um, pressed flowers cardigan that I knit. So I just bought a little extra to knit this and now I have quite a bit left <laughs> from this. So let's see if I can use this up. <laughs> I just keep having extra. Uh, and then I thought you'd like to see the, the hand spun that I still have left. This was about 100 grams, maybe 115. Um, this is a Three Waters Farm uh, Fiber of the Month Club that I was a part of for a while. This is called Mary Poppies, and I think it's Polworth, could be Merino. And I have, I, I haven't weighed it, but probably about half of it left. Um, so I'm trying not to be too precious with my hand spun and realize that even if I do use my hand spun in a project, I might even still have some left, so it's not like this yarn is gone and used up forever. I still have enough for another project, so. That was a lot of fun. Um, I love how it turned out and have just really enjoyed seeing all of your projects. Two things with the, the shawl knit along. One thing is shawl terminology, mostly to do with shawl shapes. Um, and the second is yarns that are good for shawls. So the first is shawl terminology. There are scarves, 
shawls, shawlettes, and wraps. And those can sort of be used interchangeably, but I wanted to sort of note a couple of differences, especially if you're looking at patterns and you want to know like, hmm, what is this kind of going to look like? Um, a scarf traditionally is rectangular and pretty long, so you're going to be wrapping it around your neck at least once or twice. So this is a, sh a scarf. Um, it's a two-color brioche in sort of a fluffy mohair that it's not a woolly thistle yarn actually, but it's a good example of the shape. So this is the traditional, I'm going to wrap it around my neck. It's a rectangle, um, see rectangular end, scarf. So you'd usually like that. Um, something that is, I'll take this off, a shawl will tend, not always, but tend to have kind of a thicker spot and some thinner spots. So this is the area shawl. I knit it over the winter, or actually last fall, um, using Olcentrum two ply, so it's the sport weight. Um, and at the one end, well, both ends, it starts kind of with a point, pointy end, and goes through and gets wider and wider, and it actually has a bit of a crescent to it, so the top edge is not straight. So it's a bit crescent shaped like that. Um, you can have triangular shawls that tend to be straight across the top and then have the point. And those can be either knit from the outside in or from the inside top edge sort of out. Um, often it's sort of you start with the middle and you kind of increase so it goes out. Um, but you can do it different ways. You can also do it where you cast on all the stitches on one edge and then you decrease to the other edge. Or you can start the other way and start with the little tiny edge and increase and you end up with a triangular shawl where this is a little more crescent shaped. It's not a true crescent because crescent shapes, they, you can, you've can you often probably seen them on Ravelry, they actually like really curve around and they tend to really hug your neck. Um, this sort of shape has a little bit of the hug your neck, but it's also got this kind of, if you wear it in the front, it's kind of the big fluffy um, sort of bibby thing to it bib's not the best word for it, but it's got a lot more fabric in the front than the than the scarf did. Or you wear it sort of the really traditional would be to wear it kind of over your shoulders to the back. So it'd be more like that. And maybe you wrap it around. Um, so those would be shawls. And a shawlette would tend to be a smaller shawl. So it's still the same sort of, there's a thick spot somewhere, whether it's on one edge or it's in the middle. And it might be crescent, it might be triangular, but sort of a bigger piece of fabric with some pointier ends, usually. Um, shawlettes tend to be like one to two skeins, depending on the weight of the yarn. So they're much smaller and they tend to go right, like pretty close to your neck. Um, sort of like if, a, like if the effect would be as if a cowl didn't connect to itself, that would be sort of more of a shawlette. Um, and then another big, another option would be sort of a more hap style which is this not, this is not a traditional hat, but it's sort of hat style where it is, it's actually a rectangle. Rectangle with some, you know, it starts from the middle and knits some lace and then goes out. And this is actually knit as a blanket size, but you can also fold it. The traditional way to wear a square hat would be to fold it so it ends up being sort of triangular if you're not using it as like a baby blanket. And then the same thing as a triangular shawl, you're kind of wrapping it around. So that's a lot of fabric. Um, yeah, so those are the general things. Um, a wrap often is either larger, in my opinion, it's either a lot more yarn or is a lot lacier. Um, they tend to be rectangular, so like really thick rectangles. Like So it ends up being a really big piece of fabric, which I don't actually have one um, nearby. But if you think of the shawl size, but you made it really wide this way and in both directions. Um, Hohi Locatelli has a good number of, of wraps. Um, you tend to wear them kind of wrapped around yourself like this. Uh, but that's just, just another option for things that are shawl or shawl-like. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is yarn, yarn selection. So this yarn is a, a worsted, there's a few worsted weight yarns in here. So this will give you a thicker shawl, scarf, shawl, whatever. Um, but if you add lace, oops, there's a tail there. Um, it ends up still being pretty light and airy. You can still sort of breathe through it, see through it. Um, air goes through it. Uh, this is, was knit as a baby blanket that rather than a true shawl. 
uh, but you can definitely, this is the oak, sorry, this is the Oaken pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, it has both a triangular option and this rectangular option, um, but it's knit in worsted weight and I would um, suggest that pattern because it has a really nice, you can see it, sort of diagonal, or uh, not diagonal, diamond shaped lace pattern here. And for worsted weight, I actually, this is, the orange was 100 gram skein, the white was 200 gram skeins, and the blue going all the way around was another 100 gram skein. Um, so it ended up being about 400 gram skeins. Um, but it's really nice. Another, you know, you can also go down to sport weight. So this is a sport weight yarn that's in a shawl. Um, again, this is Old Centrum. This is in garter stitch. So you can see the, all the ridges and a lot of short rows, but a lot of garter stitch. So it tends to be pretty squishy. When you go thinner in yarns, you're gonna have thinner fabric. And so you tend to, if you want some, some of that still squishy factor, um, something like garter stitch or another textured stitch, um, or even cables would be really nice to add some of that squish when your yarn is getting thinner. Um, so that's just something that I would consider if doing, if you're going with a thinner, a thinner weight yarn. Um, this is another thing I finished this winter. This is the Gaka, G-A-C-A -A, shawl. Um, and it's knit in Manchalope by Wool Dreamers. Actually held, well held four really, because it's the two strands off of two different plates. So it's four, four of the little strands, but two functional strands. Um, and it is a shawl because it does, I mean, it's fairly scarf-like, but it is a shawl because it does have, this area is thicker here than the rest of it. And you do wrap it around yourself. It's, it's actually quite hot today, so I'm not gonna do this too much. Um, but this is a really fluffy yarn. It's an unspun yarn, so you can also absolutely make a shawl or a scarf out of something that's fluffier and thicker. Um, depends really what you're going for. If you're going for a lot of drape, what you're really looking to do is go a bigger gauge for the for the yarn that you're going to be using. So like, this is JNS. This is jo um, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. This is FC fifty six, sort of a purple that has some greeniness to it. Someone told me it was a Barney color, <laughs> but I really like it. I think it's a really nice purple. Um, but when you might knit this at like 30 stitches for color work, you want to really knit it at like 22 or, or less for, um, for shawls to get that, get some of that drape, 22, 24, or even, or even, you know, you could go crazy and get to 20 or something. So even though it's a woolen spun yarn, um, it's really nice to use in shawls when you go sort of to that drapier end of the spectrum. The same with this, this is technically um, knit as a chunky weight, but I think this, um, I used a fairly big needle, I think it was a US 17 or 19. So you can see, you can actually see sort of some of the air and light, if I can even get a good angle on that, through it so that it's not, um, it's not as heavy, it's not as dense as it could be. So I just don't want you to think like, oh, it's a worsted weight, I can't use it for a shawl. Oh, it's a fingering weight, I have to use it really densely. Any yarn you take and you knit at its like really loose end of its spectrum, you're going to have a nice uh, drapey shawl, even if it's worsted spun, even if it's woolen spun, even if it does or doesn't have nylon or alpaca or all these other things in it that could make it more drapey, um, you can really use whatever yarn you want. You just have to look in, at the gauge and, and really think about it. The other two yarns I wanted to talk about that are more often used for socks and are designed for socks um, for a couple different reasons that I think would make a fantastic shawl are West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4-ply here. I think this is called Blue Raspberry or something like that, sort of a tealy aqua color. Um, so it does have some nylon on it, in it. It is super wash. Um, so it, it's a nice yarn that's designed for socks, but if you knit it at a loose gauge, um, not like the, you know, 28, 30, 32 that you'd knit it for socks, more in the sort of 24, 22. Um, you can really make some nice shawls and it comes some, in some really great colors and also colors that have some of their self-patterning. That's really fun. Um, the other is Exmoor Sock, um, which is John Arbin's sock yarn, uh, one of their sock yarns. And there's two things about this. There's a little bit of nylon, there's 10% nylon, but it's more that the breeds in it and the spinning of it make it really suitable for shawls. So it's worsted spun, so that's gonna be a, a bit smoother than a woolen spun. 
It also is made of Exmoor Blueface, Coriadale, and Zwartblaz yarns. Um, especially the Exmoor Blueface and the Zwartblaz are longer wools, um, and they are um, drapier wools, so like similar to like a BFL, oh that's the other thing, this one has BFL in it, and BFL will always give you more drape than, something, than some of these other ones. But uh, having some long wool blends in your yarn will give it some more drape. It's a little tiny thing, but you can even see, if I pull this down, even this little 50 gram skein will start to kind of drape itself. Um, so again, I wouldn't knit it sort of at the 2830. I would knit it more at, you know, 22, something like that. Um, but I think that's another thing, like don't overlook sock yarns for their ability to make nice shawls. First, I'll show you my Hansel half that I knitted for last year's half cow. This is the half Hansel in the medium size. So the Hansel half, if you get the pattern, you get the full big square and then the half square, which is a, a triangle, obviously. Um, and it comes in three sizes. There's a small, a medium, and a large. So I knitted the medium size. And as you can, this is, it's a pretty big span. I can put it on so you can see what it looks like. I usually wear my hats like this. I put them on with my coat and it's all cozy or at work if I'm cold at my desk and you know kind of judge it here so that you can see the fun the fun part. So I knitted this in um, John Arben yarns so uh, not really commercially available John Arben yarns the ones that you have to get from John Arben. I think the red is from a, a line called Harvest Hues um, and then this lighter brown is just their Exmoor Zorp Bless blend. Um, but then the darker brown is Daughter of a Shepherd Heritage, which I got in my Wooly Thistle selection box. Actually, two years in a row I got that. Um, and that's also spun at the John Arbin Mill. And I'll give you a close-up of these colors. This is a really simple pattern to knit, um, especially if you want to kind of dive into lace but aren't really, like, super comfortable with it yet. Because it's, um, it's very simple to read. It's just like an old shell lace pattern, um, which is a traditional Shetland pattern that just makes a little wave. It's really pretty. This is the center spine. That's why there's a detail here. But this just happens naturally through the decreases and yarn overs. Um, it's, it's garter stitch, which means you don't have to purl on the backside, which is also helpful. Um, although it's sometimes harder to read your lace that way. The Balvraid hap, which Kareen and Maggie showed on the last shop cast, is kind of similar to this in the construction. So you knit this big triangle and then you knit it up, you just knit this border on and then you knit the applied border here. Um, but that one is a little bit more complicated lace, including in the in the uh, the little detail on the edge. Um, and that one you do have to pearl back. So if you're more interested in like a little bit more of a challenge, that might be for you. The Balvraid Hap by Rita Taylor. Um, I knitted that one too in the smaller size in the Daughter of a Shepherd Heritage in the dark brown and it's wonderful. I love it. So um, this is yeah Hansel Hap. Again I think the applied edge here is this lace here. This is optional. I like it. Sometimes like people do it in a contrast detail which I also think is really fun. I'm thinking of making another one of these also. I've got plenty of yarn. I have a couple of skeins of Arm Skip Manor um, four ply in like a gray, kind of medium gray, and then a white. And I'm thinking of maybe we're making a Hansel hat with those two skeins. So I could probably get a medium size out of just two colors. Um, yeah, but there's that. And another shawl that I love, this one's real easy, also good for beginner lace knitters and garter stitch. This is a shawl that just uses one skein of yarn, which is, you know, helpful for the budget sometimes, but also just like it, you can make like a little lighter weight shawl for a different season. This is the, sh this shawl is called Ieri, which is spelled I-E-R-I, -E it's an Italian word. <laughs> and it's by Maria Lacole, and it just has simple eyelets. So you can see these single eyelets every few rows, and then you get a, like a little eyelet stripe. Again, this is really, really simple lace. Um, it's just yarn overs and decreases, very regular, um, easy to follow, um, easy to know if you're on the on the right track, <laughs> and it uses one skein. Um, it has this is a little hard to see, but it has some little pico detail that if I had had t pins I would have used, um, but I couldn't find them when I blocked this, and so I didn't um, use them. But I'm thinking I'll probably reblock these and pull out the little 
edges, these Pico edges here and open it up a little more so it has this fun detail and they pop out a little bit more. This is not knitted in woolly thistle yarn. This is knitted in a very drapey blend of like alpaca and cashmere and silk or something. Um, but it's great. It has a nice wingspan, skinny wings here. So the, like that, that really tuck under so that it doesn't really come off, which I sometimes find with a bigger hap. It's sometimes they don't stay on my shoulders always. And this is kind of nice to just like have. Again, this is a little lighter weight. Sometimes it's nicer for the spring as just a layering piece, or if you're in like New England or somewhere colder, maybe even in the summer. Um, definitely if you're in the UK and you're, you know, you know that the, the summer nights can be a little chillier or rainy. Nice to have something little to just carry on. It weighs like nothing. <laughs> and honestly, I'm thinking of making another one of these. Um, and this is the yarn this jagger spun um, heathers. The uh, light this is a very lightweight. It's 498 yards in this 100 gram um, skein. This is 100% wool. Um, I've knitted a sweater in jagger spun heathers before. I knitted the Gudrun Johnston's Yoki Doki with the body and like the light gray, and I just love it. It's really lightweight. It's really well balanced yarn. Um, spinners, you know what I'm talking about. It's <laughs> just the 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 plies and the thickness and how tightly it's spun it's just it's just so perfectly balanced and it's so lovely um and so I actually got this in my selection box I think back in 2021 and it's just been in my stash waiting to become my new would be a shawl I just knew it because there's a lot of yardage on this and um it's just kind of like you know you can get a really nicely sized one skein shawl out of one skein of this So right here is my Hansel, or one of my Hansels. It's a full Hansel hat. And I I love this thing. But this is knitted, I think, in color 54. Mm -hmm. With Jameson and Smith, it knitted from a cone. And it's just so squishy and bouncy feeling. Yeah. And I love the edging on the Hansel hat. So this is the full hat. So it's actually a big square, like so. Thanks, Maggie. Mm -hmm. And I probably could have blocked this more aggressively even and made it a wee bit bigger, but I didn't. Um, and this is so squishy, I love wearing it. The Hansel Hap um, is a really fun knit for a shawl um, and very wearable, very traditional, which I do enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, behind you, Maggie, is um, Natography's Hap uh, called Forest Path Hap. Sunshine on the Path Hap. <laughs> Sunshine on the Path Hap, that's right. Yeah. I loved knitting this. It was all garter stitch. It was, uh, it's a long and narrow one with some uh, little lace repeats in it. Very, yeah. very potato chippy and lots of lots of fun knitting in it. Yeah. Um, nice edging put on too. So, and then I brought some other shawls that I've knit Let's in see. days gone by. Um, and I have suggestions. So this is a shawl called Nordic Wind that was very oh. popular a few years back. And I knitted this in like brown sheep or something. Okay. But this was actually written for Let oh. Lopey. Oh, was it Let Lopey? Let Lopey. Oh, yeah. okay. So um, I think I wouldn't mind re-knitting this because it's just simple, but very elegant and yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. Mindless. So, and actually mine's only three That's colors. That's a great choice if you're um, a newer yes. shawl knitter. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, knitted back and forth. So you will be purling. And uh, mine only has three colors, but the original pattern called for four shades. I think hers were all gray, but there's many, many, many knitted. Mm -hmm. I knitted this par as part of the original knit along for it, which is years and years ago. Um, this beautiful uh, shawl is one of my favorites. This is um, by Annie Claire, and it's the um, Isle of Purbeck. Mm -hmm. I think there's another word. Tales from the Isle of Purbeck, something like yeah. that. Um, and it's just got gorgeous lace and it's knitted at a DK weight. So I think this knitted in Chuku DK or um, Strickgarn would be scrumptious. Mm -hmm. Rama Strickgarn. Oh, same shawl. You do, don't mm -hmm. you? What did you knit yours with? The the Hole in Sons. The Hole in Sons. This, yeah. is, this goes back in time to um, the Woolly Thistle's yeah. early days when, um, before we started. That was when I started full on... Yeah. Drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah, I was I was in it already. And um Hole and Sons was this beautiful, very rare yarn from um Paul Dorsets, I think. 
um, from Benjamin and he could not keep up. And I think he, I think we knitters actually scared him off. <laughs> Yeah, and we wanted it. It was such beautiful yarn. It was, and when I started working with his aunt uh, for Isle Yarns, um, she said, "You know, I've got some left. Do you want it?" And I was like, "Yes, please." And we did kits, and it was very, very special. And that was yeah. it. That was the very last of it. Yeah, because he he um yeah, but the pattern is done. wonderful. Um, yes, it Annie looks Claire. more complicated than it like. It, yes, it, I had no trouble knitting it. That's what I like about it. It's full on lace work and very And you textured. often describe lace as your Achilles heel. Yes, but and I didn't actually was... knit this. <laughs> so this there was knitting. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> if it's hard, have someone else do it. There you go. <laughs> you know who knit this? Lori, um, oh, I'm blanking on her last name right now, but Lori times five. Oh, yeah, okay. She knit this. And sent it to me because I sent her the kit, and Aww, then she knitted it and sent so it back. Nice. I know it's lovely, and it's one of my favorites. If you aren't following Gory Times Five on Instagram, um, you should. You should. <laughs> Beautiful Instagram account, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah. But I, I would, I would definitely want to knit this. Yeah. Actually, I would make the effort because I think it's really nice. Yeah, but it's good to hear it's, it's not as hard as it looks. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was really good. Shall I keep going? <laughs> yeah. These are all good ideas. I was thinking about this one the other day and I could not remember What's the it name called? of it. Is oh. it the Color Affection? Yes. Color Affection Shawl. Is that a Vera Balamaki? Yes, it is. And I love it. I love it. You start with that solid pink, I think. Mm -hmm. But if you plan to knit this, it's an oldie but a goodie, you've got to be very careful about that edge because mine is too tight and I think it, see it kind of, it cinches it in more than you want. You want this to be much more elastic than it is. Do you remember what yarn you used? Yes, this is Blacker Tamar. Um, a very early version of it. It's quite different now, I think. Um, feel I'm almost it. wondering, like, the fiber content, made, was it not a very bouncy wool? So, like, did it have any long wool in it? Yeah, Tamar was pretty much all that. There we go. Yeah. Yes. So, But you can see there where it's pulling and cinching. Yeah. And it, that that makes me sad. I just want to take a pair of scissors and cut it no. and open it up. But I won't. I haven't yet. Don't do that. I haven't yet. But you know, it's I'm just, not scared it of scissors. It just makes it better to fit around your neck. It does. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so this is the color affection by Vera Valamaki. It's really pretty. It really is, isn't it? Um, I enjoyed that. Oh, and then oh my gosh, another blacker, blacker swan. Um, this was my original Hansel hat. And this one looks bigger. It's probably um was it a heavier weight yarn? Blocked. So yes, I think this is heavier definitely than Jameson and Smith. This yeah. was a uh, blacker swan, which is a merino. And mm -hmm. I think last time we were talking about pilling. Yeah. So I've used this one a lot at home and it is very pilly. And I think that's because of the softer fibers, you yeah. know, that's gonna happen. Um around the edging, you can see that I've used um I think this was Jameson and Smith mostly, and there's no pilling on that at all. Yeah. But there is in the in the middle there. But still a soft, warm, comfy yeah. uh, wrap. And you could probably, you know, use a, a wool comb or Of course, yeah. Or... I just never have, and then I didn't do it before I brought it in here, and here we are. So yes. Yeah, it's good. It's so beautiful. These, thank you. So I have knit many, many more shawls. When I first started knitting or back to knitting. Um, I think I knit a lot of shawls. Anyone who knew me pretty much got a shawl. I was just knitting them, yeah. putting them on Ravelry and then gifting them. And I was really enjoying that. I spent my um, shawl cal knitting the Halligarth shawl with, and it took three skeins of Rambler because I knit the bigger size, which I always want mm -hmm. to do for some reason. Well, the bigger um, size is cozy. Well, it is. Yeah. You really get it around you. And I can't wait to be wearing this. Look at that color, first of all. I love that color. I love all the colors in it. Um, and then it's it's one hundred percent lace, so I'm very very proud. <laughs> and it, the yarn just really pops. It does, like and it's, it's staying open. Yeah, it's holding um, open really nicely. Yeah, and it's got an applied border. Oh.